the thug is in what is up guys this is logan also known as lrxc on pokemon showdown and round one of this adv 1v1 duo swiss tournament has ended and i am here to kind of as the title says kind of analyze it show some highlights sets all that stuff um so kind of what i'm thinking for the um the process of this video is going to be First, looking at some of the trends we saw, such as in the usage stats and in the games actually played. We're then going to look at three sets that I really, really liked um, and think there's a lot to infer from. And then after that, we'll show some just like funny moments, some hiccups, some mess ups, all that stuff. It's 1v1. Stuff like that is going to happen. So let us begin. First, we're going to take a look at the usage stats. Um, so the usage stats in 1v1 in like 1v1 terms would be uh like what you see here aren't all of the pokemon that were brought on preview but instead were the pokemon that were actually picked into battle and we see the first big trend which is zapdos destroying everybody usage wise um 45 times it was picked which is by far more than any other pokemon which is kind of cementing itself as maybe the best pokemon in adv right now um and we'll look into that a little bit later with some replays but you can just go to the thread yourself and see that zapdos is being used a lot and is winning a lot with you know drill peck and thunderbolt it's speed power bulk um it's a electric type that beats a lot of ground types etc etc it's a it's a very good pokemon um but the one that i want to look into first is the rise of the kanto starters um mainly charizard which i always knew was a good pokemon but uh i didn't I don't think I'm realizing just how um, centralizing it is right now. So just looking at this replay here, this is like one of the first matches that was played between EU Featured and Call Me PK. Look at how weak both of these teams are to Charizard, even though they have very solid Pokemon. Um, and reminder, Swampert is not a Charizard answer. But if we just look here, like both of these teams' Charizard answers are Charizard. Um, and I don't know why EU Featured goes Marowak here. We can just see that this is a fire type that is beating the ground type. Swords Dance, Shore, Sub... Nice hidden power grass, hidden power rock, but it doesn't matter because sub, sub, sub into blast burn and a lot of things are dying because it is a Pattaya plus one boosted blast burn. We look at here, this is a sample team that's being used um, from the same match, still bringing a very, um, honestly, a very, very Charizard weak team. Um, Charizard can, can beat Zapdos because it is a speed tie and you can get blast burned. And it's just like, you have all of these solid Pokemon, right? But they still can lose to Charizard. And Blanched goes Charizard into the Marowak yet again. This is a very common thing that we saw. Um, that, yeah, people are just not bringing enough answers to Charizard. Um, and this is the main way to use Charizard. Beating things like Swamper with Hidden Power Grass and a lot of other things. But we're all, we also saw Mushy Masha, who is new to ADV 1v1, but is a ADV OU main. They brought a really, really cool Charizard versus Bowl twice. So this is the first preview that we have Charizard versus. And not only that, but it also has a very cool slow row. But instead of going the classic sub blast burn uh, flamethrower route with HP grass, we saw Charizard here use hidden power ice. Yes, it is going for a speed tie, but it did work very, very nicely here in beating that Salamence. And not only that, but this is the coolest usage that we saw. He brought the exact same team. And this time, just I'll just let it play and we'll see what happened. A very Zapdos weak looking team. Clicks and Dirt turn one on the Thunderbolt. And gets a Salak boosted Blast Burn off. Very interesting, or Fire Blast off. Very interesting Charizard set. Um, what's interesting about this though is that like, um, Zapdos I don't think really has a, like, well like let's think. If, if Zapdos is max speed, then I think the, Play would technically be to go for Thunderbolt because if you outspeed and you sub on a well I don't know I think it's interesting I don't know I think Zapdos play is usually to Thunderbolt turn one and it's just like yo if I win the speed tie I'm winning the game and I guess Mushy took advantage of that with Endure Salak but um yeah it's just Charizard put a lot of pressure on this series but just in general Charizard was winning a lot of games by just um outspeeding everything and subbing and blast burning on a lot of things charizard's putting in a lot of work next we have blastoise who is similar to charizard in that it's gonna use its almost signature move in this generation hydro cannon to beat a lot of things just a lot of things in general and this is jim socks a well-known 1v1 player just won 1v1 majors is a 
a very good player. You know, and on London Beats, not known for his 1v1 abilities, but instead is extremely good at 6v6. And we see here that Blastoise actually won Gym Socks three games in a row. And we can see the three different ways that London Beats tried to beat it. So we got Skarm, ADVO, Yuman, not as good in 1v1, Protect, Icy Wind Sub, Surfs, 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 Surfs it down, very bulky, takes down the Skarm. Here we say, okay, I'm going to go Zapdos into the Blastoise. Clicks Thunderbolt. Blastoise is tanky enough to eat it. Goes Icy Wind. Drops that. And then he's going to hit it with a very, very powerful Hydro Cannon. Bam. Done. And then London Beats still decides to bring the same team, which obviously right now loses to the Blastoise. And tries to get maybe Fancy. Try to hit it with Hidden Power Grass, which isn't going to do anything. Because Blastoise will always outspeed after the Icy Wind and just kill. So, um... Or even, so like, even if, hold on, I meant to pause. Even if that didn't critical hit, remember Blastoise, when it clicks Icy Wind, still has enough HP to sub down to the Pattaya boosted Surf or Hydro Cannon. And it doesn't have to rely on Icy Wind accuracy to break the Zapdos' sub because Surf is probably always going to break. Um, so yeah, we saw Blastoise put in a lot of work there. Blastoise is winning games. And then the coolest development, I think, if we go back to the usage stats, I was not expecting Venusaur to be clicked seven times and even used more than that. This is Itchy, who's um, a known 1v1 player. And on I'm Just Grey, who isn't as much known for 1v1, but is known for uh, being good in other tiers. But here we see Venusaur is used as a very hard Marowak answer because Titar and Salamence are quite weak to Marowak. And instead of running a, something a little bit more flimsy like Sceptile, which we'll explore later, um, he decides, you know what? I just want to totally destroy Marowak with Venusaur. And Venusaur is a lot more solid at that. And I'm just Gray makes the nice pick and hard goes um, Venusaur into the Marowak and destroys it with the Frenzy. Goodbye, Marowak. So hard called out Itchy, and I'm just Dre actually won that series uh, 3-0. Um, so yeah, uh, Venusaur was used in that regard. That's the main reason, way I think I'd use Venusaur. And also on this team, notice the Sceptile weakness. Venusaur solidly beats other grass types like Sceptile with access to Sludge Bomb. Here, we see a different usage of Venusaur. This was versus Call Me. These are two well-known 1v1ers. Elo Bandit has a big YouTube channel. You all probably know him. And he used a different Venusaur here. Um, like, when I was looking at this preview, um, I, I didn't think Venusaur was much of a pick because, uh, I mean, Marowak and Aerodactyl, I mean, Aerodactyl especially should beat Jumpluff. Marowak um, might struggle a little bit with Jumpluff, should, but should be able to break it down unless, it, unless Jumpluff is, like, sub... Unless Jumpluff doesn't have um, Encore in his sub Leech Protect... Uh, sub, Leech, Protect, Encore, instead of Amnesia, which is the set that I talked about in my video. Um, and, uh, hold on a second. Let me go back to that. Uh, so Venusaur should beat that, but Aerodactyl beats that as well. Aerodactyl should also beat most Raikou, and it does lose to Scizor, but this team just looked very weak to Scizor in the first place. I mean, Marowak could maybe outplay the Scizor, but I was expecting Marowak into these three because, like, you know, Marowak should just win. But Elo Bandit is using a different Venusaur here. It has an interesting mix-up. It's a Leech Seed Venusaur. It is not, like, sub-Frenzy Plant Giga Drain. <clears throat> and it's instead supposed to be acting like a sort of Sceptile or Celebi where it's sub-Leech Protect, and it stalls out the Scizor and wins. So... Cool mix-up by Elo Bandit, and he secured that victory and also beat Joker 3-0. So we can see that Venusaur is a little bit... We're seeing, starting to see some versatility with Venusaur as well, and it's just kind of a... It's just interesting that people are using it as much as I've seen it. Um, yeah. Uh, but we could go to Zapdos here. So this is now... I want to talk about... I just want to look at two... Just two general replays showing, like, Zapdos's versatility. A lot of us know that, you know, it can sub... Protect. Also, let's replay this song. Um, you know, it's sub, protect, thunderbolt, hidden power, grass is the main set. Beats a lot of things in general. Um, but there's some other things about Zapdos that make that are making it uh, very hard to beat right now. Because you would think, okay, I have the Aerodactyl. We're going to kill the Zapdos. Hard pick into the Zapdos. But Rock Slide sometimes just does not kill the Zapdos. Especially if you're running Jolly. And Zapdos can eat that up. And now your Rock type that is supposed to destroy Zapdos is losing 
uh, Zapdos is doing things like that. This was a very interesting mix up from SciFiCon versus Tenzi. We see the, the banned Zapdos come out and actually beat a Registeel. Hidden power fighting on the Amnesia. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if here's the one thing that is interesting. I'm not sure if Registeel necessarily has to Amnesia turn one versus Zapdos. I think that's technically a misplay because let's say you click counter turn one. This the, by the way, this is counter, but it was way too late. But let's say you click counter turn one and Zapdos subs. Does it really matter? You just you're not gonna die to a lot of T bolts unless they're like modest magnet or something like that. So then after you counter and they sub, you can still amnesia up and start breaking down with seismic toss. So technically Registeel can always scout turn one for band and click counter. And you know, band can't just click Thunderbolt because then they just amnesia after that and stall it out. But we see that Zapdos really mixed up Tenzi here, and it was too little too late um because as this was counter registeel i don't know if i in defense would have even saved it but nice pick by sci-fi con drill peck was also going to hard beat the heracross and potentially i don't know if drill peck ko's gengar unless this guy uh, i don't think he was running hp ghost or anything like that no it was hidden power fighting so i don't know if it would have beat the gengar but just wanted to showcase some little zapdos moments i guess is how i put it um because yeah, Zapdos is putting in a lot of work. I don't want to go too in depth to that because you'll probably see that more round two as well. Uh, so yeah, Rise of the Kanto starters is a big one. What I'm expecting from this, specifically with Charizard, is I'm go I'm what I'm predicting is next round we might see a lot more Charizard lures, such as faster Pokemon that are running surprise hidden power rock. Maybe like if you see here, um, like in this game the Marowak lost, but I think one potential idea on Marowak is to um use endure so when this sub happens sub you know okay well like maybe with hidden power grass so it's more solid hidden power grass he's gonna sub again in rock slide and then he goes for the blast burn what if marowak clicked endure there marowak is definitely a pokemon that can get away with running endure because you have a free choice band plus in thick club you could totally run like bone meringue hidden power rock endure and then you know whatever else you want and you could totally lure the charizard if you break all of its subs um so yeah i expect to see some endure pokemon which could also lure blastoise um and i think also people should start maybe speed creeping this blastoise set that i have that are well actually i think boat made um yeah because it's very very specific anyway Let's also look at the other big trend that I saw. This is the third big trend is sample teams. Lots of people were using my set of sample teams, um, which I'll show on the screen now in post editing. A lot of people were using these sample teams. And I think what people should start to take advantage of is making sure that their teams have positive matchups, such as 2-1 matchups versus the sample teams. Like, let's look at the first game that was played between Crunchman and Decem. Game one. Sample team versus sample team. Blastoise and the boys versus Blissmen's bugs. And we see Alakazam hard into the hair cross. Game two. We see Jurassic Water Park in on Crucify's team. And we got Swampert losing to a Charizard. No, it didn't. Yes, wait, why did this lose? Hold on a second. Actually, let's look at this. Why did this lose? Hold on, I didn't even realize this. Hold on. Swampert in on the Charizard. Oh, he clicked sub on the rollout. Oh, that was the mistake. Yes. Substitute is going for the rollout miss. Yeah, Swampert's going to live this hidden power grass. Um, rollout. Tie Berry, and it's going to live. That This was actually a misplay, I'm now realizing, because what Charizard can do, since rollout is so weak, is, um this yeah, Swampert could maybe honestly start running hidden power rock. That is a good idea for Charizard. But the, anyway, the thing here is, uh, technically, the Charizard... After this sub, I think it lives the second rollout. And if it doesn't, he could totally hit in power grass turn one and then sub himself into a Pattaya range. So that was actually a big misplay. The Charizard should have one here. Um, and, you know, we started to see, like, my Kecleon being... Wait, no, that's a different one. Look here. Started to see my Kecleon being brought out. Tries to trick a Swampert. Does not work. Stuff like that. We see a lot of these sample team battles. I think sample teams are good. They're good teams, in my opinion, because I made them, obviously. But I think people can take advantage because it's not just people that are just using sample teams and only the sample teams. People are using them as kind of like backup filler teams, such as like, okay, I only want to build like three to four teams this week. And I also bring this sample team because I think it's solid and I feel comfortable using it. Stuff like that. 
And I think people can start to fish for matchups when it comes to people that, you know, in round one are using this. They might not expect that, you know, 1v1 people prep a lot for their next opponent and they might get C-teamed with the sample teams that they're using. So I recommend either maybe using the same previews and just mixing up the sets and totally throwing people for a loop or, you know, starting to build teams, starting to prep for your next opponent because we have, you know, a week of replays to look at on your opponent's tendencies, Pokemon that they've used, the ideas that they have, etc. Such stuff like that. Um, so yeah, those are the big three uh, um, trends that I saw. Rise of the Kanto starters. Zapdos reigning supreme over Registeel, and uh, the sample team's being used. <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to look at some of the sets that I like the most, and this one was by far my favorite set that I saw. Um, this was Adam3560, newcomer to 1v1 in general, but is getting very into 80v1v1, and also probably my number one fan on this channel, versus Mackie's Fox accomplished 1v1-er um usually gets past teams but is maybe the best pilots in 1v1 at using them um so this was a really great series in general but what makes this even more entertaining is the fact that Mackie was revealed to have been ghosted by other people in a voice call during this you know kind of lame of them but you know it's whatever it's pokemon all that stuff and they got in trouble for it um so this was basically adam versus multiple people helping Mackie out um, I saw super cool previews, super cool ideas, and super cool dynamics that I kind of want to maybe explore in depth in this series. So here we go. Game one, we have Adam versus Mackie's Fox. Um, very nice type core here in almost all generations is Rock, Fire, Grass. Um, so we got Reggie Rock, the well-known Charizard now, and Celebi. This is a team that was being used by a lot of people. Um, and then we have Adam's team, who's he's been using in a lot of room tours with Zapdos, Tyranitar, and Ludicolo. Um, so looking here, <clears throat> Ludicolo actually does lose to this Charizard. Um, unless it is Raindance Ludicolo, the standard Leech Seed counter Seismic Toss set would struggle with Charizard because Blast Burn is just going to KO it. Zapdos is very nice into Charizard. Zapdos struggles with Regirock unless it's like tanked for like an HP Rock and maybe tries to hit and power Grass it twice. Um, so it's very... Uh, it's a very interesting matchup. I think what's looking really nice here, though, is Ludicolo still in general. I mean, if it's a um, if it's a Rain Dance set, it's going to stomp. Ludicolo is always going to stomp the Regirock. Rain Dance Ludicolo can really punish the Charizard. So Leech Seed is not going to work on each other for the Grass types. And if Celebi is lacking Recover, then I would think maybe I don't know. It, it's it's a this is just a very interesting preview in general because you also have to realize that like. Ludicolo is versatile. Tyranitar can do a lot of things. Zapdos can do a lot of things. Very cool previews by both sides. Let's see what's picked here. We got Celebi versus the Ludicolo. Uh, it is Calm Mind Celebi into the Rain Dance Ludicolo. This was probably hard picked into the Charizard because Charizard had Charizard could have been the hard pick into the Ludicolo. Um, Celebi should in general beat the Ludicolo and maybe and does have a, actually a very nice matchup versus all of these things. But yeah, this is just, I don't have much else to say about this, but that this was just a very interesting preview dynamic for the the first game. And the Celebi, even though it got crit, Calm Mind Celebi takes the game. Uh, if this Celebi had Giga Drain, which I assume it did, was probably also going to beat the Tyranitar. Ludicolo was unable to beat it. It didn't, was not packing Ice Beam in this situation, I guess. Not that it would have mattered. And the Zapdos... I mean, if this was Calm Mind Recover, then the Celebi should have beat the Zapdos. So, a potentially Celebi weak team. Um, yeah, so now let's go to game two. Look at these previews, dude. We got Scizor, which I think I might have personally underrated. I think I underestimated the fact that it's a steel type that beats a lot of ground and fighting types in general. And just admits that it's weak to fire. And then we got the Wall Rain, which I did not see much of round one, but I think can put in a lot of work. Um, and yeah, Ursaring, you got the classic Zapdos, Adam sticking with his Ludicolo, and yeah, we got an interesting preview dynamic here, so like, first thing I think of when I looked at Mackie's team is, it seems very Aerodactyl weak in theory, as in the Zapdos might not be balked for Rock Slide, the Wall Rain might not be balked for Rock Slide, but usually is, but this is, team looks like a Rock Slide flinch away from getting absolutely destroyed, even if this is like Counter Ursaring or the rare Rock Slide Ursaring, this team is still one giant flinch away from losing, which is why I think Aerodactyl can be great in scenarios like this. Um, I also see 
Scizor can put in a lot of work. I think I don't think Ursaring is. I don't know if Ursaring's ever a pick here. I think Ursaring could be a hard pick into the Ludicolo, but I'm not sure what Ludicolo would necessarily do here. It probably beats the Wall Rain. Um, with I mean, obviously with like a you know grass moves and seismic toss breaking it down. Um, but Ludico is just gonna get KO'd by the Ursa Ring. Yeah, uh, let's keep going. Um, so yeah, it just very versatile. Po I mean, these ones aren't as much versatile, but yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, and we see what Mackie decided to go here. Um, we go, we see Aerodactyl into the wall rain. So I think Adam was thinking Aerodactyl just has too good of a matchup to not click. And it's not like this team can really lure Aerodactyl without losing to the rock slide flinch. And Mackie might have taken advantage of this, you know, Mackie and the crew or whoever was ghosting them might have taken advantage of this and knew that, okay, what is my best mon into the Aerodactyl? It's going to be the wall rain, which lives the rock slide and can KO it back with Surfer Ice Beam. Not only that, but, um, I'm assuming that the Zapdos was just not tanked for Rock Slide because I think if the Zapdos was tanked for Rock Slide and it was also just going to lose to a flinch, Zapdos has a much better matchup into the Ludicolo and the Scizor as opposed to Walrein, which should hard lose to Scizor, I would think. That, you know, it's not a very common matchup. I haven't like really tested it out and also struggles with the Ludicolo. Adam could have, Adam could have seen that, but you have to, he had to, he had to, I think he was thinking like, okay, like I'm what's my best chance versus the Zapdos here? And it looked like it was to be the Aerodactyl. Um, so we see the Rock Slide barely doesn't kill the Wall Rain. A common thing with Aerodactyl, honestly, is not KOing stuff. And we see the Wall Rain tanking it. This might have been Adamant Aerodactyl, which would have made a lot more sense hard into the Zapdos. But uh, yeah, um, Wall Rain tanks and Mackie right now is up 2-0 and with some cool Pokemon. Now we get to the cool stuff. So we got game three. Adam decides to totally mix it up, brings no similar Pokemon, and uses a Gengar Registeel Starmie team. As Mackie sticks to their guns and is using Walrein again, which won them a game, still bringing Zapdos as they have the last time. So it's basically the same preview, but now with a Heracross over the Ursaring. Um, I think maybe the Heracross was fishing for better matchups. This is what Adam was bringing a lot, but yeah. Interesting team here. So, Zapdos answer on Adam's side. Looks like it's to be Registeel, which obviously should hard lose to the Heracross. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so Heracross would be a hard pick into the Registeel, and you can take advantage of that by either if maybe Adam has a Psychic Starmie um, or a Hydro Pump Starmie that just kills the Heracross. Gengar can wall Heracross if it's not carrying HP Ghost. Um, and yeah, Gengar, Gengar honestly looks like it has a very nasty matchup here because like um, Gengar can beat Zapdos pretty easily with Ice Punching twice and tanking any hit. Um, well, it, okay, if it doesn't have Never Melt Ice, Gengar would struggle with the Zapdos. But when I was looking at this preview as I was watching this, I was thinking to myself like, man, Adam has been talking up this Gengar set that I made and this might be that set. And if it is that set, I think it is the easiest pick of his life into this team because I just think, I don't think the Heracross was coming out. I think it was going to be the Zapdos into these two. The Zapdos into these two or the Wall Rain. Well, no, it would ha the Wall Rain just doesn't do much here. It would have to be the Zapdos into these two and hoping that you crit the Registeel. Um, yeah. Also, I haven't like planned this analysis. So if I'm ranting a lot or if I'm like saying the same things, Please forgive me, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, but I did kind of want to just give my impressions on a lot of these matches. Um, so yeah, so check this out. This is so sick. We see Gengar into the Zapdos. Curse Gengar. Outspeeds, cuts his zap health in half, and it is my Spideff Gengar, which takes 49 from a Zapdos Thunderbolt. So we see here, is affected by the curse, protects. Mackie makes an interesting play in subs to bring his health even lower, which makes no sense. Protect. We see Resto Chesto Gengar healing himself back up to full, maximizing his bulk again. Eats a Thunderbolt. Doesn't matter. This curse is killing it, and he protects. And Curse Gengar lures in the Zapdos very nicely. Gets a good matchup versus the team, and Adam is bringing this back in really, really cool fashion. We see here uh, LRXC sets GG3. Um, you guys can't see that, but yeah. Adam is bringing it back with the Gengar. So now let's go to Game 4.
Game four, Mackie repeat uses the same team from game one. You know, it's a very, very solid team overall, and it did win them a game. And Adam goes to his own Fire Rock Grass with Sceptile, but instead using Sceptile over Selby and the very, very uncommon Rhydon versus Regirock. I didn't even talk about Rhydon in my video, but Adam has been hyping it up a lot. Seems to be pretty viable, cool option. And yeah, so when I was looking at this preview, I was like, wow, did Adam really bring a team that whose Charizard answer is is um that whose Charizard answer is his own Charizard or maybe like a endure rock blast Rhydon that like tries to endure on hidden power grass turn one. But that wouldn't make any sense. It will never outspeed. So Rhydon just loses the Charizard. Um and Sceptile would have to be something really, really fancy to beat the Charizard. And Mackie thinking like, okay, like this team is probably not prepped for Charizard that well, and I'm just gonna pick the Pokemon that has the very nice matchup into all of them, which is what has been happening. Celebi, generally nice matchup. Wall Rain, eh, honestly not the best matchup, but you know, you kind of get the point. And this is how Adam brings it back in game four. <clears throat> Sceptile into the Charizard, banded, hidden power rock Sceptile, luring in the Charizard very very cool adam is bringing this back with style very cool team from adam again hard luring in the charizard with banded hp rock taking advantage of the fact that charizard's a really good pokemon this also sh probably would have beat the reggie rock it probably still kills with leaf blade twice shouldn't die to anything unless it's like hidden power bug reggie rock or something like that and yeah figuring that the celebi wasn't coming out because like charizard was just a better pick there because Charizard also beat the Rhydon, but Charizard, in theory, had a much better matchup versus Sceptile and Charizard than Selby did. So, great game by Adam. And now this Game 5 is the preview that I thought was really, really fascinating. This is Game 5, Adam versus Mackie, with multiple people ghosting, by the way. So, this is Adam versus the world right now. Brings the Pokemon that he likes to use. Ludicolo and Rhydon. We've seen Ludicolo twice and Rhydon once. Adam has been talking up these Pokemon all week and then the very solid Ursaring. And Mackie brings a total mix-up. None of these Pokemon have seen a preview this whole time. Alakazam, Tyranitar, and the rare Flygon. Very interesting preview. So this is the first thing that I saw when I was looking at Mackie's team. I was like, okay, what is the Swampert answer, right? Because, like... Like, I knew that Mackie had to have, whoever gave, built this team, had to have a secret Swampert answer somewhere, right? Um, whether, it's, whether it's maybe like a Hidden Power Grass Tyranitar or a Counter Tyranitar, whether it's a Flygon that maybe hopes that, like, uh, the Swampert doesn't have Counter or Ice Beam and is just hitting it with Earthquake, hoping maybe it can break past with Curse. Flygon's not a Swampert answer. I don't know why I'm even talking about that. Or, like, something like that. Or if it's maybe like a Sub Pattaya um hp grass alakazam maybe a barrier alakazam there had to be some sort of swampert answer here hidden and the interesting dynamic about that is that whatever the secret swampert answer here is most likely also going to be a secret ride on answer because secret swampert answer is code for i have i'm packing hidden power grass so i figured that adam would read this and figure that Rhydon was not a picker because Rhydon was maybe walking into a trap here. So I was expecting to either see the Ursaring or the Ludicolo. So yeah, so I was expecting Mackie to pick whatever was um, the secret Swapper, aka Rhydon answer, which I figured had to be like the Tyranitar, the Alakazam, something like that. And I didn't think Adam was going the Rhydon. I think it would have been the Ludicolo or Ursaring. I, I feel like the answer was going to be Ludicolo. But yeah, and we see something very interesting here. I don't know if Mackie would have made this pick if Mackie was playing by themselves, but let's just look at what happens here. So Adam goes Ludicolo into the Flygon, and I was like, what the heck? Why is Flygon being picked? Like, is Flygon the secret Rhydon slash Swampert answer? Is it Hidden Power Grass hoping that it does? it's not running Ice Beam? Like, like a mixed band Flygon or something? Like, what is this? Or like a Screech Flygon? And here we see it's Toxic Flygon, and it's not the Rain Dance Ludicolo, uh, which Adam used before in Game 1 and lost to the Selby. So Adam was trying to mix it up with a different kind of Ludicolo here. This was a very Metagross weak-looking weak team anyway. And we see the Leech Seed misses. Kind of crazy. 
uh very unlucky from adam because let's just look at how this plays out we got sub on the flygon hits the hydra pump to break the sub leftovers leftovers heals toxic isn't gonna go for leech again on the sub that's a losing play but misses the hydra pump on the substitute anyway flygon is slowly healing ludicolo is slowly not healing earthquake's not gonna do a thing hydra pumps breaks the sub and we see here substitute substitute and slowly breaks down the ludicolo it would have actually made a difference with leech seed um i, I can we can find the replay actually uh, <clears throat> so what i was saying is adam actually decided to test it out himself and we can see here that if the ludicolo hit the leech seed so toxic leech substitute hydro pump substitutes again even with another hydro pump miss look at how much leech seed is taking away from the lefties and Ludicolo is still at 82 after turn 4. Rest Flygon, by the way, not Screech. Go there, Hydra Pump. It has to still hit a good amount of pumps as Toxic is slowly wearing it down. But he can still Hydra Pump. And Leech Seed is doing way too much. And this Ludicolo was winning that game if it hit a good amount of Hydra Pumps. So Adam actually got very unlucky. But the point that I want to make here is the, uh, the, the depth of this pick is very fascinating. Because what was expected here is... Okay... T-Tar was too obvious, or T-Tar was too obvious as a, like, somehow a Swampert lure, or something like that. And so what would be picked hard into the Tyranitar? Um, I mean, Ursaring can win, but what was predicted more as the Swampert answer, I think, was Tyranitar over Alakazam. And so Ludicolo was going to be picked into the Tyranitar. What had the best chance versus a Ludicolo that was going to be this Leech Seed Hydra Pump, or just Rain Dance in general? Some sort of Spadef invested Toxic Substitute Rest Flygon, which was a great, great pick. Red hard, but it's interesting that even with that, that the Ludicolo still should have won. So just very, very fascinating preview. A lot to look into and a lot to analyze, and it was a great set. And Adam ended up winning because of the ghosting, but just great plays by Adam and Mackie. All right. <clears throat> So now we're going to look at Crucify versus Hero's Destiny. Crucify is Soaring Mind on the top, um, and Hero's Destiny is on the bottom. Uh, Crucify is a known 1v1-er, um, very, very good at 1v1. Also, we manage a team together. Uh, he performed very well in two PLs ago, and now he's taking on this tournament. Uh, brings two of the Kanto starters, which we were talking about before. Press the Ever Solid Registeel. We got Hero's Destiny here. Rocking my old sample team of Subpatia Starmie, Bandaradactyl, and a Calm Mind Entei. So, this is a new 1v1-er versus a not new 1v1-er who kind of gets 1v1 a lot better. And here we see here, um, this is looks like a pretty simple 50-50. Either what's the what's the Registeel answer here? It's going to be the Entei or an Aerodactyl hoping to crit. Um, and what beats those two? The Blastoise beats those two hard, unless a flinch or something like that. And here's could be like, okay, well, I'm going to pick into the Blastoise then and go Starmie. Registeel could be picked into that. But I think Crucify kind of preyed on the initial fear of like, I don't want to get stalled out by a Registeel. And maybe my Calm Mind Dente can handle this Blastoise. Maybe he can beat the Zard. And we see here Crucify makes it just a nice pick in general, which is the Blastoise beating the Ente. Simple pick. Game two brings the same team. And Crucify brings a very cool looking team, which is kind of like what I think of like the the three ultra versatile physical threats. Not only in ADV OU, but in ADV 1v1. Very interesting previews here. Um, and yeah, so uh let's see what happens here. No, I mean, like, so what we got here is that Metagross answer here for heroes is gonna be the Entei again. This is another like, okay, my steel type answer is only one thing. Um but the Starmie can also beat some Metagross. Starmie's going to destroy these two. Um, so yeah, it was just another kind of simple like 2-1 sort of pick. Like, do I go do I go Entei hard into the Metagross, which would be hard into the Starmie? Or do I go Starmie and just go into these two? Simple here. We got Starmie into the Banded Metagross. Tries to Hydro Bump turn one. Does a lot. Pataya wouldn't have killed. And we got the Shadow Ball Metagross, which was there specifically to beat starmie also hits dust clops and alakazam hard but just a nice solid pick by crucify yet again and crucify is looking to take this series very quickly game three this is a fascinating game to me very very fascinating game 
Iris is like, okay, this old sample team is doing garbage. We're going to mix it up. And he brings Marowak, Gengar, Moltres. I have not seen a single Moltres. At, well, I've seen some Moltreses at this point, but it seemed to be very overshadowed by Charizard. And Crucify is bringing a very solid Regirock Charizard core, which we've seen a lot. Now pairing it with the Raikou. Got an interesting preview here. Um, and yeah, so this looks like a simple, like, either go Marowak into the Regirock and the Raikou. Or whatever is supposed to be beating Charizard. And the Charizard answer here is looking very minimal. I mean, Gengar oftentimes is just going to die to a Blast Burn. Um, and if Gengar hits the Charizard too hard, it brings Charizard into Blaze, which can then kill the Gengar back with a Flamethrower, most likely. Um, but it could also sub on the Blast Burn, or it could just, like... Like, Gengar, Gengar in versus Charizard is very shaky. And Moltres... I didn't know if, like, at watching this replay, I was like, I don't know if Moltres is going to beat a Charizard. I mean, Moltres is, could theoretically beat the... It's not going to beat the Regirock, and Moltres is going to hard lose the Raikou. But we see here, Crucify is up 2-1, feeling comfortable. I'm just going to make the safe Charizard pick, and look at the dynamic of this game. This was very, very interesting. We see Moltres into Charizard. Let's see how this plays out. We got Protect turn 1, in on the Substitute, losing play here. Let's see, Flamethrower does a solid amount, 21%. We see a sub for Moltres. Remember, Moltres has pressure here, so Charizard's going to be losing HP a lot quicker than the Moltres. We see another Protect trying to stall more turns out. Hidden Power Grass. And now we see this is turning into a sort of stall war. Um, but Charizard can't heal, and Moltres is healing. Flamethrower does not break the sub. We see the Morning Sun. So this is that sub. This is that. This is the only pressure staller in ADV with instant recovery, which is really, really fascinating. And we're gonna see what happens here. Hidden power grass crit breaks. I think it was breaking anyway. Flamethrower natural Moltres flamethrower with that stupid special tech naturally breaks Charizard sub, not boosted or anything, which is kind of crazy. Flamethrower here. See another sub. We see another substitute here. Crucify is slowly losing HP, but maybe he can break the Moltres down. Protect. Moltres is looking to be winning this matchup. We've got Flamethrower. Flamethrowers again. Substitute. Are they speed tied, I'm realizing? Wait. No, Charizard is always faster. Charizard is always faster. We got sub. And it's interesting. I could look at this a lot more in depth and really, really try to figure out whether uh um hold on a second and really try to figure out whether either of these sides could have played this better um what i'm thinking here is that like i think like i'm not sure if i think this moltres could have been using flamethrower a lot well well here's the dynamic though here's the interesting thing is that okay i slowly break crucify subs down and bring charizard down but charizard's going to be hitting stupid stupid hard with a faster blaze pataya blast burn which could kill the moltres um so moltres is simultaneously trying to keep his health high and also i guess not break crucified down enough but the same thing is is can can the moltres not use flamethrower enough to keep crucify to like stall out crucify's attacks hidden power grass flamethrower and blast burn and if Moltres has enough power points, as in PP, to stall Charizard out and cause it to struggle before it can kill Moltres, it's it's very interesting. I'd have to test out this matchup more, but we're, what, what's interesting here is that I guarantee nobody has tried out this matchup before, and not now it's being played out in a live scenario where you don't have time to test it out. you got to make the plays in the moment. So he's protecting on the Hidden Power Grass. That is a good use of Hidden Power Grass versus the Protect, wasting the not-as-useful attack as opposed to the Flamethrower, which could start breaking through Moltres a lot quicker. Um, yeah, we're going to repeat. Uh, hold on a second. Hidden Power doesn't break. Besides the Flamethrower, fades the sub. Crucify has a very free substitute here. Wait, I'm dumb. This was... This is a, this is a pivotal moment. Hold on. This is a pivotal moment. Hidden Power Grass, damage breaks the sub so this is the interesting dynamic here moltres is now uh, moltres is now healed and here's the thing does crucify just substitute again playing it safe or what crucify can do is crucify knows at this moment that the substitute is taken let's see how much damage has this taken 
Well, it's actually only taking a hidden power grass damage, but the flamethrower should kill after, should break the sub after the hidden power grass. And what Crucify can be trying to do here is flamethrower the Moltres. The Moltres right now is could flamethrower itself and bring Crucify down into his Pattaya Blast Burn because we know that flamethrower is doing more than 25 because it's breaking subs. Would bring it into Pattaya range. Um, yeah, would bring it into Pattaya Blast Burn range and it could kill the Moltres. I assume they might have been doing calcs in between or anything, but yeah, so flamethrowers, the sub, flamethrowers, but doesn't, it gets a low roll, and it's been breaking the sub before, but didn't break it here and does 24%, yikes, but Crucify still has the same sort of play as opposed to like, yeah, so I think Crucify here should probably still sub, or let's see, the protect, goes for the substitute, and now Crucify is in a great position, I don't know if protect was the play there, I think... I think Substitute might have just been the better play here, I think, or the Flamethrower, but let's see how this plays out. See, Flamethrower doing a ton, does 50, so we know that Blast Burn probably wouldn't kill then, and Moltres goes and subs itself. If Moltres clicked Flamethrower there, that game was over, and Heroes Destiny knew that, because if you break the sub, you're still lower and you're going to get Blast Burnt. Um, but Crucify basically has to die to two hits right now. Um... So I think maybe the Moltres actually should have flamethrowered. You guys can see me analyzing this live. This is interesting. So let's see what happens here. Protects. Flamethrower wastes another flamethrower. Crucify is running out of PP. Flamethrowers is going to break the sub. Morning Sun's up. Let's see what happens here. 94. Goes for flamethrower again. 47. Substitutes. He's stalling out these flamethrowers very nicely. Will you HP grass in the protect here? Yes, he will. Good play. Because here's what's interesting about that is, let's say, let's say, oh, well, let's see. Yeah, here's the thing. That was a great play because if Crucify, let's look at here. Uses Protect. If if Crucify, or no, if here is Destiny, Blamethrowered on the HP Grass, which wasn't going to break the sub, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it won't break the sub, even if it's plus one boosted. It's four times resisted, and Moltres has great speed death. If it breaks the sub here, and Crucify doesn't break Moltres' sub, that's game over. So, very ballsy, but I think probably necessary hidden power grass here. I'm not sure where the flamethrowers are at. Flamethrower breaks. Moltres' morning sun's up again. Cruc Moltres protects. Hidden power grass on the protect yet again. Would have lost. Well, actually, no. Well, no, he could have subbed very easily. Goes for Flamethrower. And then we see a Protect just to make sure he's not going to die to the Blast Burn. And let's see if Moltres lives at full health Blast Burn. Bam! Moltres lives. And here is Destiny takes that in a very fascinating Moltres versus Charizard. I'm not sure if this could have played out differently. I tried to talk about it as much as I could. But yeah, very interesting dynamic here. And here is Destiny is bringing this back. Here we go. Game 4. They bring the same exact preview as Game 1. Crucify going back to the Game 1 team that won. And let's see what happens. Same preview, same ideas. Entei into the Registeel. I think Crucify here just tried to call the simple, okay, he's going to go Starmie into the Blastoise. I'm going to go Registeel into that Starmie. Um, and here's Destiny says, nope, I'm going to call that out. I'm going to still go Entei into the Registeel. And what's fascinating here is that my old Entei, just the standard Calm Mind, can still lose to Amnesia Registeel without a crit. But Flamethrower is probably going to crit and takes out Crucify with a crit eventually. It was going to crit. He had 18 left and was sitting behind the subs and was stalling off the seismic tosses. And Tay wins. And now we see the game five. Look at this preview. We're going to switch sides. Very, very interesting preview from Heroes Destiny. Aerodactyl Hypno Milotic. Milotic I'm seeing used a lot by people that main ADV OU. Um, it's not as common in 1v1 because I don't think it's as good in 1v1, but it is just still a solid Pokemon in general. It's a great defensive water type. And we see Crucify go back to the, I believe, the Game 3 team. Yes, the Game 3 team with Regirock, Charizard, Raikou with Hypnomilotic Aerodactyl. So here, um, when I'm looking at this preview, I see Aerodactyl is going to smack the Charizard and the Raikou. Um, was going to lose to the Regirock. Um, unless it's like a sub protect rest pressure stall aerodactyl, which would probably win, um, which would be cool, which would be a cool pick. 
Hypno, um, Hypno's gonna lose to the Raikou. And so is my Lodic. My Lodic should beat the Charizard in this. So it's mainly like a I think it's either a I go my Lodic hard into the Reg hard into the Regirock or Aerodactyl hard into the Raikou because both of them beat Charizard and so I don't think Charizard is ever coming out here. I think it's either going to be the Regirock or the Raikou. And what's looking and here's Destiny is like okay, I'm going to call the Raikou here and this is a great game 5. We see it. Raikou in on the could this be the comeback that Heroes Destiny versus a accomplished 1v1er? Endure Raikou Earthquake lures the Aerodactyl. It's Salak Raikou lured the crap out of that Aerodactyl and killed it with Thunderbolt. Great play by Crucify. Cool team. Didn't even need to hard lure Aerodactyl because Regirock was an Aerodactyl answer. But probably did some nice stuff versus Salamence as well. Very cool set, and that was just a nice game five from Crucify, bringing it back and taking it home the victory. Now, okay, <clears throat> so now we got Omni Weeb, who is a newer person to. I don't know if they're that new to one v one, but this is the same person that I saw playing in a lot of ADV one v one room tournaments, um, and using some interesting stuff versus well known ADV OUer and community member Callus. Check out their channel; he does really cool narrations, and he was excited to build for this tour with Java. So. See a cool preview. Callus ja bringing some very solid Pokemon. I mean, Sceptile, Raikou, Ments are all top tier Pokemon. And we see again, two Kanto starters putting in work on preview and the my favorite Pokemon, Kecleon. So here for HT's team, Kecleon is the dedicated Raikou answer and is gonna, uh, is shaky versus Sceptile, is gonna hard lose to the Ments. Blastoise looks to be the main Ments answer and Charizard looks to be the main Sceptile answer, but could lose to the Bandit set, obviously. Um, but yeah, so not much to analyze here, but I think Callus didn't realize what Kecleon can do here. Raikou looked very nice into this team. I mean, it's a, it's a right, it's a Kecleon. What, what is it going to do to Raikou? I mean, Raikou can just call mind on it or just hit it and it's going to beat the other two. HT calls that with the nice Kecleon play and we see Kecleon putting in work. Electric color change hits it with a band return, does a ton of damage. Raikou. Callus is going to try to crunch, but Raikou's, Kecleon Spadef is too much. Notice the power of color change here, um, that he has to use crunch because Thunderbolt's going to do nothing. And so, uh, yeah. Kecleon takes it down, and Callus is down on game one, and we see the power of Kecleon beating some special attackers. Game two. What the heck is this preview? Regirock, Crobat, Victory Bell. Two Pokemon that are pretty much unseen. We have a small Crobat fan base brewing up, but uh, I'm not buying it. We got another solid team from Kalos, Ursaring, Aerodactyl, Dusclops. Um, what I see here is I'm like, what the heck is the Dusclops answer? Like, I don't know if Crobat is beating it. Maybe with like, maybe it can tank a lot of Ice Beams with its Spadef. Maybe it hits it with a Shadow Ball. Doesn't lose, hopefully doesn't get countered. Maybe it's Toxic Protect. Um, I don't know if Victor Bell wins. It's also weak to Ice Beam. Maybe could Encore into something. Um, Regirock just looked like a great pick to hope that he doesn't go Dusclops and beat these two Pokemon. So let's see what happens here. The Dusclops into the du into the Regirock. It's Curse Clops, not banned, and catches a Wisp. This should be over for the Regirock. Curses imprisons. Let's actually look at that again. Curse. Just in case this has rest, Dusclops is going to use Imprison, but it fails. Kalos now knows this is not a rest. Dusclops is going to start Calm Minding up to try to break down with Ice Beam. I think you may, he maybe could have, um, I think it maybe could have started Ice Beaming earlier so that it's not as crit prone. Even with pressure, it is going to still be taking a good amount from the Hidden Power Rocks. I think we, we probably should have seen it start to, um, Ice Beam a lot sooner because it still it was going to be doing some significant damage, but here the Reggie the Dusclop should be winning. Rests up, rests up, is slowly stalling it out of Hidden Power Rocks because it only has twelve because of pressure, and on the and on the perfect turn to get the crit. Ht gets the lucky crit on the Dusclops, and sadly takes it over Callus. Callus should have won this, but uh yeah um. Please don't bring a team that loses to Dusclops, but this was relatively lucky and got the win. Um, so HT is up 2-0. Next, 
we see Callus bringing out the sample team we think versus a pretty solid idea from ht this is a common theme in other 1v1 generations where you bring grass steel what type is it only type that it's weak to is fire so you bring a fire resist which salamence is a very good fire resist unless you run into arcanine um or you misplay like me anyway and marowak has a very good matchup in this team because the because what i'm going to explore here is the idea of i think why people are starting to use venusaur more which is Sceptile has a hard time with Marowak. Let's just look at this. I already revealed the pick into each one. We got the Sceptile into the Marowak. Callus goes Marowak into the Sceptile. Substitute turn one. We see Aerial Ace. Do we see any lefties recovery? No. When you don't see le Sept leftovers recovery on a Sceptile and you see them click sub, you know it's not banned. You know it's not leftovers. So it's probably going to be that sub Pattaya set with HP Ice or maybe another fancy move. But always Leaf Blade. Here we see, here, play here. Another sub on the Aerial Ace. Marek is going to die to a Pattaya boosted um, Leaf Blade here. And so we see sub again, and a great, smart, intelligent play from Kalos here, knowing that I, if I just keep Aerial Acing, I'm just gonna lose. So he sets up the Swords Dance knowing that at this point, Sceptile is not gonna be able to kill with Leaf Blade, even though it's an overgrow range, it's not gonna kill his specific Marowak. And he's going to KO it with the second hit of Boomerang after it subs. So we see it here. Leaf Blade fails to kill. Does a lot of damage, but Marowak with some Spadef is going to beat it. And this is why Sceptile is just not as solid versus Marowak. Now, obviously, after we see the Aerial Ace here, what could have happened here? Sceptile could have made the ball... HD could have made the ballsy play in Leaf Blade on the Swords Dance. But that's a hard play to make. But Kalos makes a very intelligent play... Knows his 50-50s from ADVOU, knows when to make the right plays versus his competitors, and gets a nice bone ring, and Kalos should be up 2-0, but he did, I mean, he did make some misplays here. But we see Kalos is bringing this back, and now, look at this swanky preview. We see, oh wait, I forgot to reverse it. Uh, we'll just keep it like this. We'll keep Kalos on the top. And we got, this is just a preview, we got a Dragonite, which I have not seen at all. Very, I mean, it, I, I've seen HT use it in some room tours. But it's usually a worse Salamence, um, Alakazam, and Heracross. And then we got Kalos bringing out the Articuno, which I didn't cover at all in my video. I've never seen it. Very interesting to see what it is. And let's analyze the matchup here. Looks like um, Heracross would be a nice pick into the Swampert. As, I mean, Alakazam, I guess, can beat Swampert with Barrier Encore if it doesn't catch a Hydro Pump. Um, it's an interesting dynamic there. But Dragonite looks like a weird pick. But here we have... We'll just show what happens here. We'll just show what happens. HT makes the nice pick. Heracross is probably going to lose to these two, but he hard picks into the Swampert knowing that Swampert looks like it has a generally great matchup versus this team or was hard calling out the Alakazam into the Entei, into the Heracross. So here we see here and just a nice Swords Dance. Tries to go for the Curse. It's too little, too late. It's going to catch a Mega Horn. That Swampert countered there. That would have been hilarious, but it is my Spadef rollout set. And HT takes it with just a solid Heracross pick into the Swampert. And HT takes it. So just an interesting set to show some dynamics. And yeah, those were the three sets that I wanted to cover. Okay, and now <clears throat> we are going to explore some of the funny moments. <clears throat> and the just the funny moments that I saw in during round one. A lot of games are played. A lot of stuff is going to happen. So... Here we see Dead Gamer Man using Arcanine in on a Salamence team. Just look at this. Let's see if you guys know what this is from. He kicks Arcanine. Great pick into the Salamence. Lures it. It's the HP Ice set. Outpaces HP Ice. Is going to live a plus one Earthquake. Sees leftovers and just like me, clicks Extreme Speed. Almost as if he just wanted to get on this video at the end. He also misplays and chokes versus the Salamence, which I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh, so now we're going to look at this series between Poke Otter and Odudok. Um, this is a very innocent looking series at first. Just got a Zapdos and a Ludicolo. Beats Ludicolo. Zapdos is broken. Look at this preview. Politoed, Septile, Swellow. What in the world? Politoed and Swellow. You guys saw Swellow in that one video. It sucks. Politoed I've never seen in my life. And let's see what happens here in this preview. Nice pick, Sceptile into the Ludicolo. Um, 
hard calling out that this guy was going to be scared of the Politoed, I guess, and was either going to go Zapdos or Ludicolo. Um, Subtile probably has the best overall matchup versus both of them. So we see Sub. Rain Dance Ludicolo. It is Leftovers Sceptile, so it should be Leech Seed. Eats a Giga Drain. Clicks Mimic. 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 Mimic Sceptile. And mimics the Giga Drain. Calling that he was going to be using that instead of Surf somehow. I don't know why this Mimic happened or what was going to happen. But he clicked Mimic. And he's going to win because of it. Mimic Sceptile. Surf. Uses that Mimic Giga Drain to heal some health. Eats a Hydro Pump. Massive damage. Gets another Giga Drain. Ludicolo looks like it should be winning this. Protects on the Hydro Pump. Uh-oh. Now the Sceptile outpaces. Hydro Pump's not going to be hitting as hard. Hits it with another Giga Drain. Heals some health. Rain Dance. This is Mystic Water Ludicolo. No lefties. Misses the Hydro Pump. Takes another Giga Drain. And Sceptile is somehow going to win this. Yeah, so we just saw Mimic Sceptile for... I, I, I have no clue why, but we saw Mimic Sceptile. So if that wasn't crazy enough, this literally had me like... This, this Game 3 had me like... I, I don't even know. I, I'm just going to let it play and just let you guys witness this. So we got Alakazam into the Politoed. He finally brings the Politoed out. Come on, Alakazam. No way this is losing. Icy Wind, cool. Um, Definitely could Encore that Icy Wind, but apparently doesn't have... Or, uh, well, no, can't... Uh, actually, that would... That's actually hilarious. I didn't even realize that. Does this have... That could have been a misplay if he Encored, because he could have undersped and Encored into Hydro Pump. But look, Hydro Pump is still doing a good amount, but not enough... Wow, that is actually doing a lot. I'm I'm actually surprised that plus two Alakazam is taking 35 from a Politoed Hydro Pump. But anyway, Alakazam kind of on the back foot here. He's going to use Psychic. Just wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this. So yeah, Wincon here. Sure. Recall Mines again. You recover, presumably. Hydro Pump, recover. Okay, so now here, Alakazam, you just Psychic twice. You're going to eat two Hydro Pumps. It can miss. Psychic twice, you're going to kill this Politoed. Look at what happens here. Takes the Hydro Pump. Psychics. Almost kills the Politoed. Lance at Barry. Critical hit boost to break past the Calm Mines. Hits the Hydro Pump and gets that critical hit boost. Lucky. Kills the Alakazam. And <laughs> Politoed wins the game with, with perfectly timed Lance at Barry hitting Hydro Pump crit boost. Yeah, and Odudok took that in three. I don't even know what to say to that. Um, yeah, Politoed won. Let's look what happens here. This is another funny moment. Got Venusaur with a great matchup, a phenomenal matchup, taking on the Mer Tyranitar and the Sceptile. Um, like, Marowak is a... Marowak is probably this team's Dusclops answer. And, uh... Yeah. Anyway, let's see what happens here. Ghost Ty I don't understand the Tyranitar straight up. I think the Tyranitar... So I think the Tyranitar had to be hard into the Raikou, which was the team's Dusclops answer. And Magikarp calls that out with the Venusaur, which in this situation is probably a better Marowak because Marowak beats these two. Well, it has to outplay the Sceptile, and Sceptile can just win with a certain set if it's just really... Sceptile can just win. And Venusaur is a lot more dedicated into Tyranitar and the Sceptile. <clears throat> um, <laughs> we see Tyranitar into the Venusaur. Venusaur should win this. Gets hit by a rock slide hard. Magikarp subs and dies to sand. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just funny that the Tyranitar beat the Venusaur because like you just needed to click Frenzy Plant. I mean, maybe you were afraid of a sub Tyranitar. But like, I just thought that was, I just thought that was very funny that the Tyranitar not only outsped the Venusaur, which it naturally shouldn't, but that Venusaur subbed was slower and died to sand. Uh, yeah, just a funny moment. Um, this is a cool set. Uh, Merman versus LPC was a cool set in general, but this was a very cool game four, I believe, for Merman to bring it to game five. Brought the very rare Lanoon. Could be Belly Drum, could be some sort of band trick thing. And we see here that it nicely lures in the Hariyama, which has a great matchup because it's like, you know, it's going to destroy the Lunoon. Going to obliterate the Regice. Has thick fat. Should beat the fire type. Check this out. 
cross chop super defensive blaziken clicks counter very nice lure and then outspeeds and clicks overheat great just awesome lure awesome game very cool set counter blaziken never seen that before next we see not a racist use my team that i used in my video medicham salamence camera up um in on selavi raikou scissor camera should have an amazing matchup versus this team but we must be reminded that while camera is one of my favorite pokemon it does kind of suck substitute eruption has leftovers is can stall out this eruption eruption on the protect and now it's the 50 50s of okay do i just waste all my eruptions or do i have to predict when to use hidden power rock on protects you see substitute here hidden power rock does not break and this celebi is just going to take it with leech seed and this is why camera up sucks but maybe could not suck but what does suck because it probably doesn't even kill with flamethrower yep that was just another funny thing and lastly we see that kadabra kadabra an objectively worse version of alakazam gotta win with sub pataya hidden power grass the ultimate humiliation kadabra gotta win earthquakes pataya hidden power grass kills the swampert yeah that happened um so i hope you guys liked watching this video of me just analyzing looking over some of the sets the highlights the trends of adv round one duo swiss i'll be doing a video like this every week for every single round so bring the cool stuff win some games and uh oh also make sure you like subscribe do all that stuff comment what you thought maybe things that i missed as i am commentating this on the fly i definitely could have missed some things and uh i will see you guys on the next video